the transport of dangerous cargo by air, and the impact they may have on the safety of flight. The key topics to be covered include description, classification, marking and labeling, documentation, and emergency response. According to the International Civil Aviation Organization, or ICAO, technical instructions, dangerous goods are articles or substances capable of posing a risk to health, safety, property, or the environment. Dangerous goods are sometimes referred to as hazardous materials, or hazmat, restricted articles, hazardous substances, dangerous materials, or dangerous goods comat. Seemingly harmless items, such as paint or matches, when transported by air, can become volatile or hazardous. The general philosophy regarding dangerous goods shipment by air is that if the International Air Transport Association Dangerous Goods Regulations, or IATA DGR, are followed and items are properly handled, the safety risk to you, your passengers, and equipment is minimal. With few exceptions, most operators use the IATA DGR for both U.S. and international shipments. The IATA DGR is recognized almost universally as the authoritative document on the safe transport of dangerous goods and on which almost all dangerous goods training has been based. The IATA DGR regulations are based on the ICAO technical instructions. The ICAO and IATA guidance material is updated annually and provides operators with an excellent source of information on dangerous goods. When we discuss dangerous goods in this lesson, we are mainly referring to cargo, as dangerous goods are prohibited in passenger baggage, with a few exceptions. Hazardous substances in passenger baggage can, however, pose a greater threat to air safety because they may find their way onto an aircraft unnoticed. Therefore, it is the responsibility of all staff involved in passenger and cargo handling, as well as air crews, to be vigilant for signs of potential hazards. Worldwide, the shipper has the primary responsibility for ensuring the shipment complies with all identification, classification, packing, marking, and labeling requirements. The shipper is also required to provide the carrier with a signed declaration that accurately describes the shipment and that it is in proper condition for air transport. To accomplish this, shippers must be trained and appropriately qualified. Dangerous goods shipments are only accepted by an approved cargo office or as company material, or COMAT, by the Material Logistics Office. These shipments are subject to all applicable rules and regulations. The training in this course will not qualify you to package and mark dangerous goods. However, it will help you recognize these consignments and understand how they can be moved safely through the system. It is critical that once you identify a consignment of dangerous goods, you ensure that they are packaged, marked, and labeled by someone who has been appropriately trained to accomplish those tasks. Dangerous goods are regulated by many agencies, both domestic and international. Each of the following regulatory agencies ensure dangerous goods policies are followed. FAMSA, ICAO, IATA, DOT, and FAA.
It is mandatory to complete dangerous goods training for all airline employees who accept, reject, handle, store, pack, and or load any item on board an aircraft for transport, and for those who directly supervise these actions. All pilots must receive dangerous goods initial training shortly after their hire date and recurrent training every 24 months thereafter. Articles and substances classified as dangerous goods have various limitations imposed upon them, depending on the level of hazard they present. Some goods are considered too hazardous to transport by air, while others may be limited to transport on cargo aircraft only. The IATA DGR, or ICAO Technical Instructions, provide the list of limitations on dangerous goods acceptable for air transportation. U.S. regulations provide specific limitations regarding the quantities of dangerous goods that may be loaded in cargo compartments. These regulations apply to all flights operated by U.S. registered aircraft. The maximum total quantity of dangerous goods allowed in the inaccessible cargo areas are as follows. 25 kilograms or 55 pounds of dangerous goods. 75 kilograms or 165 pounds of non-flammable gas and 200 kilograms or 440 pounds of dry ice. Seventy-five kilograms of non-flammable gas may be loaded in addition to the 25 kilogram limit mentioned above. Radioactive material is limited by its transportation index, or TI rating. For passenger aircraft, the maximum per package TI is 3, with a total aircraft maximum of 50 TI. Aircraft batteries are considered COMAT and do not have quantity limits. There are no limits for items classified as miscellaneous, except for dry ice. There may be exception to the quantity limit applied to shipments of dry ice. Consignments of greater than 440 pounds of dry ice may be accepted with written permission from the dangerous goods director, depending on Aircraft type Sublimation and ventilation rates Packing methods stowage, and the presence of live animals. The Universal Postal Union prohibits all dangerous goods in airmail with two exceptions. Infectious substances provided the consignment is accompanied by a shipper's declaration and radioactive material provided it has a very low activity rate. Dangerous goods in accepted quantities are very small quantities of dangerous goods that may be transported in such a manner that they may be exempt from the marking, labeling, and documentation requirements. However, accepted quantity shipments do require the dangerous goods in accepted quantities label, which identifies the class and UN number of the contents. This only applies to goods accepted on passenger aircraft, but not passenger baggage or airmail. Refer to ICAO TI or IATA DGR for full details. The regulations also allow for dangerous goods in limited quantities. 
This term is used to refer to goods that may be packed in simpler, good quality packaging if the quantity is less than a given amount. These goods still need to be marked, labeled, and documented as dangerous goods. The net amount allowed as limited quantities is specified in the list of dangerous goods along with packing requirements. The gross weight of a limited quantity package must not exceed 30 kilograms. When dealing with replacement parts and spares, you will need to consider if the item is installed on the aircraft or a replacement part. Installed articles and substances like fuel, pressurized liquids, gases, and oxidizers are addressed in the regulation specifically accepting them from the quantity limits, documentation, and handling requirements so long as they are required on board the aircraft to meet airworthiness standards. Though not specifically required for the airworthiness of the aircraft, medical oxygen for passenger use may also be accepted from additional regulation under limited and specific conditions. All other dangerous articles and substances, including those that are replacements for required airworthiness items, remain regulated. The regulations provide certain limited relief for the carriage of spare or replacement tires. The stipulation is that the tire assembly must contain a serviceable tire and may only be inflated to the maximum pressure rate for that assembly. Serviceable tire assemblies are not restricted by quantity limitation and do not require a special load notification to the pilot in command under the dangerous goods regulations. However, an unserviceable tire is not accepted from regulation. As such, it must be appropriately packaged, marked, labeled, declared, and loaded as dangerous goods unless rendered safe. To be rendered safe, a deliberate attempt to release the pressure, a non-flammable compressed gas, from the removed tire assembly would have to be made before transporting the tire. Another commodity that is not restricted by the weight limitations is aircraft batteries. A single battery would exceed the weight limitations for all dangerous goods in a single compartment and would be impossible to transport without a specific exemption. The requirements to properly package, mark, label, declare, and transport the batteries are the same as those for any other article or substance listed or classified as dangerous goods. Regarding the shipment of company-owned spares, there are only two exceptions to the regulation permitted. Proper packaging and quantity limitations. First, consignments of replacement items for dangerous goods required onboard aircraft may be shipped using specially designed containers. These containers must provide an equivalent level of safety to the packaging required by regulation. Second, in certain cases, very specific quantity limitations may be increased. Otherwise, all shipments of company-owned spares must comply with regulatory requirements for documentation and handling. Regulated items include those that represent a significant risk to the health and safety of people and aircraft, such as explosives, flammable substances, and poison. But there are some not-so-obvious items that need discussion as well. Everyday items like matches and toiletries have become commonplace, and we don't think of them as dangerous. 
However, these items can be deadly when transported by air. Flammable propellants and internal pressure in aerosols prove extremely dangerous in the reduced pressure of the passenger cabin in flight. Even engines being transported for service can pose a danger from residual fuel, oils, or other hazards still present in the engine. Therefore, special handling techniques must be employed when moving these items throughout the system. The list of regulated items is published by IATA in the DGR manual. IATA DGR Section 4.2 also known as the Blue Pages, lists approximately 3,000 proper shipping names for dangerous goods commodities. Dangerous goods are classified into UN hazard classes, depending on the type of hazard they pose. Each hazard class is divided into several sections and specific labels are applied to each one of the classes and or sections. A system of diamond-shaped placards and labels are used to identify dangerous goods. Different colors and symbols, such as a flame for flammables or skull and crossbones for poisons, identify the dangers associated with the product. Explosives are substances and articles that cause a violent reaction producing a blast, fire, smoke, and heat when ignited. Division 1.4S is the only explosive allowed on passenger aircraft. Some examples include pyrotechnic devices, ammunition, and fireworks. Gases are divided into three categories, based on primary hazard during transport. Flammable gases are those which ignite on contact with an ignition source, such as acetylene and hydrogen. Non-flammable gases are neither flammable nor poisonous, such as oxygen. Toxic gases are those liable to cause death or serious injury to humans if inhaled. For example, hydrogen cyanide. Typically, these are never allowed on passenger aircraft. Flammable liquids are liquids or mixtures of liquids, or liquids containing solids in solution or suspension, that give off a flammable vapor. Some examples include paints, varnishes, lacquers, adhesives, fuels, alcohol, and perfume. Flammable solids are substances liable to spontaneous combustion, or substances that, when in contact with water, emit flammable gases. Flammable solids are further divided into three sections. Flammable solids are powdered, granular, or pasty substances easily ignited by brief contact with an ignition source, such as a burning match. Once ignited, the flame can spread rapidly. Safety matches are an example of flammable solids. Spontaneous combustibles are solids that are liable to spontaneous heating. Under normal conditions encountered in transport, or when in contact with air, can catch fire without an additional energy supply. Pyrophoric substances are the most liable to spontaneous combustion. These are liquids or solids, including mixtures and solutions, which, even in small quantities, ignite within five minutes of coming in contact with air. 
Phosphorus is an example of a pyrophoric substance. Dangerous when wet substances, when in contact with water, emit flammable gases which can form an explosive mixture with air. These flammable gases are easily ignited. Examples of dangerous when wet substances include sodium, zinc powder, potassium, and calcium carbide. Oxidizing substances are further divided into two sections. These are substances which in themselves are not necessarily combustible, but may cause or contribute to the combustion of other material by yielding oxygen. Examples include hydrogen peroxide aqueous solution with greater than 8% but less than 20% hydrogen peroxide, ammonium nitrate, and chemical oxygen generators. Organic peroxides are thermally unstable substances, which may undergo heat-generating, self-accelerating decomposition. They may have one or more of the following properties. Liable to explosive decomposition, burn rapidly, sensitive to impact or friction, may react dangerously when in contact with other substances, and or can cause damage to the eyes. Examples include fertilizers and pool chemicals. Poisonous cleaning agents, pesticides, and a number of laboratory specimens are examples of substances found in the toxic and infectious substances class. Toxic substances are substances which are liable to cause death or injury or to harm human health if swallowed, inhaled, or come in contact with skin. Examples include arsenic, nicotine, mercury, pesticides, and poisons. Infectious substances are those which are known or are reasonably expected to contain pathogens. Pathogens are defined as microorganisms and other agents which can cause disease in humans or animals. Some examples are bacteria, viruses, or medical waste, like used needles. Radioactive materials are materials or substances that spontaneously and continuously emit certain types of ionizing radiation, which can be harmful to human health. There are two definitions that must be understood regarding radioactive materials. Activity and Transportation Index, or TI. Activity is the measure of the quantity of energy emitted from the radioactive materials. It is used to determine the amount which may be transported in various types of packaging. TI is the measurement that defines the strength of the quantity of energy radiating from the package. It is a measurement that is taken at a distance of one meter from the external surface of a package over the period of one hour. This measurement is only used on packages bearing the yellow radioactive Category 2 and Category 3 labels. When transporting radioactive materials, it is impractical to go into the details of the various forms of substances and their different forms of radiation. The packages, or overpacks, are assigned to one of three categories, known as Category 1, white, or RRW. Category 2, yellow, or RRY2. Or Category 3, yellow, or RRY3. U.S. regulations and most commercial airlines restrict the carriage of radioactive material to the following. 
shipments moving for an intended use in research or medical diagnosis, and shipments in accepted packages. Corrosives include substances that can severely damage living tissue and corrode certain metals. Some examples are hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid contained in batteries. Items included in Class 9 are magnetized materials or miscellaneous articles and substances that are not covered in the other eight classes. Examples of miscellaneous items include carbon dioxide solid or dry ice, which is commonly used as a refrigerant, chemical kits and first aid kits, life-saving appliances, engines, internal combustion, vehicles, which are flammable liquid powered, polymeric beads, and battery-powered equipment or vehicles. It is normally the responsibility of ground handlers and acceptance personnel to ensure all aspects of package marking are correct. Dangerous goods must always be transported in approved packages, unless they are either accepted quantities or limited quantities, or if they are not restricted. Approved packages are recognized by the UN mark. A UN special mark must be on the outer packaging if it is required by the packaging instructions. This mark is always followed by a number of codes signifying various elements like type, packing group, limitations, year of manufacture, etc. The mark implies that the construction of the package corresponds to a design type that has been tested according to specifications in the regulations. Prohibited dangerous goods may inadvertently be carried on board an aircraft by passengers who are either not aware of or who deliberately ignore the regulations. If you discover undeclared dangerous goods, you may need to report it. Refer to your company's operating manual for required procedures. It is up to all involved to remain aware in order to stop hazardous material from ending up on the aircraft. Last in the chain of handling dangerous goods is the person responsible for loading the aircraft, whether it is a handling agent or one of the pilots. Distributing the load in the aircraft may require some thought and planning, particularly if there are other special loads involved, such as live animals or food products. The compatibility chart will help in the load planning of dangerous goods on an aircraft. The table indicates packages that must be separated physically from one another, either in separate compartments or secured a safe distance apart. For example, dry ice emits carbon dioxide, which can cause suffocation so it must not be loaded in the same compartment as live animals. Radioactive materials may be loaded in the same compartment as live animals as long as there is sufficient distance separating them to prevent the animal from being contaminated. Infectious substances may not be loaded in the same compartment or on adjacent pallets with live animals, but may be loaded in adjacent enclosed containers. Oxidizing substances must remain separated from other substances like flammable liquids.
This information will be documented on the Notice to Captain, or NOTOC. You can also review the IATA DGR for more guidance on separation requirements. Another item to consider is your aircraft specifications. With few exceptions, dangerous goods are limited to no more than 25 kilograms or 25 liters, or combination of kilograms and liters totaling 25 kilograms or liters, of dangerous goods within a cargo compartment. Most aircraft have two compartments, one forward, bins 1 and 2, and one aft, bins 3 and 4, and bulk for wide bodies. Remember, the soft curtain between the aft and bulk is not considered a solid wall. This means the maximum that can be loaded on a flight for a majority of passenger aircraft is 50 kilogram liters, with a 25 kilogram liter limit per compartment. The net quantity of non-flammable gas is increased to 75 kilograms or 165 pounds per inaccessible cargo compartment in addition to the 25 kilogram or 55 pound rule. Radioactive material is guided by the transport index of the package, and on passenger aircraft, the maximum TI per package is 3.0. Your carrier may further restrict the TI unit per aircraft, so check your DG manual for details. Aircraft batteries are considered company comat and do not have a limit. Because the regulations for the shipping and acceptance of lithium batteries and electronics continues to change, it is advised to refer to your operator's manual or the specific IATA DGR manual for current regulations. There are no weight restrictions for magnetized material. However, you will need to review the NOTOC to ensure proper loading location was followed. The net quantity of dry ice per inaccessible compartment varies by aircraft. Domestic flights with shipments of 2.5 kilograms or 5.5 pounds or less may be accepted without a NOTOC. Shipments greater than 2.5 kilograms or 5.5 pounds require a NOTOC. All international flights with dry ice require a NOTOC. A higher limit for dry ice is available if packed using Type 1 containers. A Type 1 container is a temperature-controlled ULD. Type 1 container used must be noted on the NOTOC Supplementary Information, or SI line. If the NOTOC indicates any warnings or cautions, or if a compartment limit or dry ice limit warning prints, all the DG shipments assigned to the flight must be reviewed to ensure proper limits are maintained. Some carriers cannot carry any dangerous goods shipments that require a NOTOC. Refer to your carrier's operating manual for details. There are three documents that must accompany all forms of dangerous goods shipped as air cargo, except those shipped as accepted quantities. The first is the airway bill. While this should be completed for all air cargo, if the consignment includes dangerous goods, the airway bill must include all relevant hazard information. The next document is the shipper's declaration for dangerous goods. Once the shipper has properly packaged, marked, and labeled the consignment, he or she must declare the contents of the package in writing to the operator 
by way of the Shipper's Declaration. The lower half of the Shipper's Declaration identifies nature and quantity of dangerous goods. The information from the Airway Bill and Shipper's Declaration is used to complete the third required document, which is the notification to Captain. The NOTOC is completed by the shipper or handling agent and is signed by the person responsible for loading the aircraft. Though the format may vary by airline, the basic information on the NOTOC must remain consistent regardless of airline. The purpose of the NOTOC is twofold. First, it acts as a legal document whereby the person responsible for loading the aircraft certifies that the regulations have been applied. Second, it serves to inform the pilot in command of what has been loaded and where it was placed on the aircraft. The NOTOC provides the pilot with one more opportunity to perform a final cross-check of what is on board the aircraft and to verify loading limitations and proper configuration of ventilation and air conditioning in cargo compartments. This is an example of a standard manual format NOTOC. Required information includes Airway bill number Proper shipping name UN or ID numbers Class or division and packing group For non-radioactive materials, the number of packages, category, and transport index, if applicable, and the destination airport listed as the station of unloading, and stipulation of any cargo aircraft only restrictions. The use of the electronic form of the NOTOC or eNOTOC is more common today. Notice the same information is provided as on the manual form. Both formats will include a disclaimer statement regarding damaged or leaking packages. Please note that neither the Airway Bill nor the Shipper's Declaration is an acceptable document for notification to the captain. It is not required to use a formal NOTOC form like the ones shown in the lesson. However, the form you do use must contain all the IATA DGR required information. Once the pilot in command endorses the NOTOC, it will be sent on to dispatch. This information gets sent to personnel at the next station of intended landing or any airport along the route of flight into which the aircraft may divert in an emergency. Proper utilization of these documents can help ensure the safe control and transport of dangerous goods by air. The criteria for whether dangerous goods articles can be carried aboard the airplane in baggage or on one's person is listed in IATA DGR Table 2.3a. Provisions for dangerous goods carried by passengers or crew include whether in or as carry-on baggage, whether in or as checked baggage, whether on one's person, whether approval of the company is required, or whether the commander must be informed of the location. Any dangerous goods items not listed in Table 2.3a must be refused. Passengers and cabin crew members are permitted to carry a limited amount of classified dangerous goods for personal use in their carry-on baggage, such as toiletry articles, such as perfume, nail polish, nail polish remover, small lithium and lithium-ion batteries, such as those found in portable electronic devices, 
alcoholic beverages with an alcohol content of less than 70%, and dry ice. Other classified dangerous goods that are permitted in the cabin include required emergency equipment in accordance with airworthiness regulations, such as oxygen, fire extinguishers, and CO2 gas cylinders to inflate life vests. The discovery of the following items in the cabin must be considered as a dangerous goods incident as the items below are strictly prohibited for transport in the cabin. Explosives such as fireworks, flares, or toy gun caps. Compressed gases, either filled or partly filled scuba diving tanks, including camping gas cylinders. Flammable liquids and solids, such as lighter fuel non-safety matches, paints, thinner, and fire starters. Oxidizers, such as some bleaching powders. Organic peroxides, such as some types of solid hydrogen peroxide. Poisons, like arsenic, cyanide, and weed killer. Irritating materials, like tear gas devices. Infectious substances, such as live virus materials. Radioactive materials, like medical or research samples, which contain radioactive sources. Corrosives, such as acids, alkalis, wet cell type car batteries, or caustic soda. And finally, magnetized materials, including any instruments containing magnets. Certain dangerous goods are absolutely forbidden to be carried on any passenger aircraft. These items include chemical oxygen generators, explosives, except for items classified as 1.4S, ammunition, and any toxic gas class 2.3 label. The following information is referenced in the ICAO Red Book and document 9481. If a package of dangerous goods has been damaged to the extent that it spills its contents, the situation must be handled promptly and correctly. Regardless of the nature of hazard, Everyone not immediately required in the vicinity must be kept well away. Anyone who may have been affected, harmed, or contaminated must be taken care of and their names and addresses noted. The person supervising the situation must consult a suitable dangerous goods emergency chart, ICAO document 9481, to see what immediate remedial action may be required. Remember, the wrong action may make the situation worse. Seek help from the experts as soon as possible. All ground handling agents should have access to an emergency chart that describes the types of procedures to handle emergencies. Treat every actual or suspected spill or leak as an emergency until proven otherwise. In the event of an incident involving dangerous goods in inaccessible cargo areas leads to an aircraft emergency, the appropriate aircraft operating checklist will be referenced and accomplished as appropriate. Landing should be accomplished as soon as practical. Refer to your crew manual for proper handling procedures. The first alert to a dangerous goods spillage in the cabin might be from a passenger. 
the passenger may be able to provide the cabin crew with some guidance on the hazard involved. Instruct the flight attendant to collect as much information as possible. For instance, check for a dangerous goods label, written information or numbers on the packaging, odors, fumes, smoke, and what, if any, effect it is having on passengers. When a dangerous good is discovered in the cabin, the cabin crew must notify the flight crew immediately. It is also essential that you and your crew coordinate actions and keep each other fully informed. The role of the flight crew is to fly the plane safely. However, if the cabin crew contacts the flight crew with questions or concerns, a reminder of the following safety procedures may be required. Put on gloves. Do not touch leaking or suspicious packages. If rubber gloves are not provided, fire-resistant gloves or oven gloves covered by polyethylene bags are a suitable alternative. Use portable breathing equipment or PBE to protect from fumes or smoke. If there are fumes or smoke, move passengers away from the affected area and provide wet towels or cloths to passengers to breathe through. Implement correct cabin emergency procedure. Do not use water on a spillage or when fumes are present, as it may spread the spillage or increase the fumes. And follow proper procedures for containment until the aircraft lands and trained personnel can assess the situation. On arrival and after landing, notify the ground personnel of all the known facts about the dangerous goods item and where it is stowed. If a dangerous goods incident occurred in flight, an air safety report will need to be completed. In many countries, this report is mandatory. Complete the report as accurately as possible. The cabin crew will need to make an entry of the incident in the aircraft maintenance logbook. Maintenance personnel can then replace the dangerous goods kit, if installed, and repair any damage to the cabin caused by the incident. When dangerous goods are discovered in the cabin, this may be an indication of other problems within the operation. Dangerous goods transport can have a negative impact on the safety of the operation and, if in the wrong hands, can be catastrophic. The flight crew is critical to ensure the safety of people, cargo, and equipment. It is necessary to Stay alert and recognize your environment. Challenge unescorted individuals. Report suspicious behavior or activities. And follow security requirements. For more information on dangerous goods, refer to the following reference items. Remember, the information provided in this training course is confidential and should not be shared with others unless there is a need to know.